that y'all so today I'm gonna go ahead and try to do a video on how to solder these um, castle connectors the uh, 6.5 millimeter bullet connectors I always use these on like all my RC's I just switched them out because um guy told me that uh, he saw a lot of people running Dean's trying to do speed runs and stuff like that and drag racing and and like it overheats a lot and the uh, they just like melt off completely or whatnot and so he said these are like the better ones to use they're like rated for like higher amperages and everything like that so yeah so I'm gonna do a little rundown on the uh, tools that I'm using I uh, have a solder sucker I have some uh, flux I'm using a uh, burns o -Matic torch it's a butane torch it's also a soldering iron but I just use it for a torch because it's you know, it's a lot easier to use as a torch. And uh, get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And uh, this used to be a envelope opener. But uh, I just broke the piece off and I just use it to cut the plastic off my wires. Got uh, some sharp wire cutters. I have some pliers so that whenever I uh, heat up the uh, helping hands, I could like take it off without burning myself. I have some uh, silver solder. I don't know if it'll focus in. And then I have a uh, soldering iron. And of course, the uh, Castle Creations 6.5 polarized blood connectors. And some electrical tape. And uh, I already said helping hand. What else am I missing? Oh, yeah paper towel just in case <laughs> never know so go ahead and get started oh matter of fact <laughs> also use this uh, screw right here when I bang in the uh, bullet connectors into the uh, plastic piece but I'll get to that later on all right so when I'm starting off first thing I do is I uh, pre tin not pretend, but pretend the uh, bullet connectors. So I'm going to put some solder in here. And note, you don't want to put too much in here because when you push that wire in, it'll start seeping out and it'll make it hard to connect to the plastic housing. So you want to use your solder sparingly. See if I could get a close up of that. So I just put just a wee bit into both of them. And now, after that, go ahead and go to the wires. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the uh, negative. So, uh, you, and this is a one thing, you know, safety first, y'all. Cut your wires one at a time. Do it one at a time because you don't want to electrocute yourself. It's going to hurt. I already put a hole. I don't know if you can see it. Right here in the carpet. Right there. And that was a fire. Because <laughs> uh, I pulled out my... Uh, pulled these out of my um, battery charger and they were still connected to my battery and they touched and they were touching on the carpet and uh, yeah so safety first y'all alright so go ahead and cut this now I'm gonna need my uh, envelope opener or whatever you use to uh, take off the plastic of your wires. I just try to use something that's sharp enough to get the plastic, but not sharp enough to cut the metal in the wire because uh, you know you don't really want to have your wire cut more than what you need it. So now I got that all out right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, flux on there. need a whole lot I'm gonna end up taking some of that off anyways but um 
to make sure that you get it all up in the threads and everything. And once you get it all up in the threads, you want to make sure that the threads are wound tightly together. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments because I'm not a pro. <laughs> I never claim to be. I just make it do what it do. So now I got the flux on there. Go ahead and pre tin this wire. And uh, you might want to use some safety glasses because sometimes this solder does pop up like boil. And when it, you know, they have the air pocket and he gets to it and it blows up, you really don't want it in your eyes. So don't do like me. Like right now, I'm not even wearing glasses. <laughs> Anyways, do as I say, not as I do. So that's in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, put on the plastic part. And uh, this is why I love using these cast connectors too, though, because whenever you're plugging it up to your ESC, there's only one way to plug it up. So you can't, you know, reverse your polarity when you're plugging up your battery to your ESC. And uh, it also tells you positive and negative on there and BAT for battery. So whenever you're soldering these, you want to make sure that when you, you know, put the negative on the negative and the positive positive, because it's going to really affect if you're going to, you know, have to resolder or not. <laughs> you know, so uh, basically, yeah, pay attention. So, I got the negative on the negative, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the uh, bullet on there with my uh, torch, get the solder sucker ready just in case. This stuff, this silver solder, it hardens quickly. But uh, it takes a lot of heat to get it going. See, it's already <laughs> it's already hardened just that quick. So got that on there. Now, what I usually do is uh this came from like some kind of furniture i had <laughs> and uh anyways what i do is i stick it in to the bullet and then i bang on it like like you know because like right now is you don't go so far so i put that in there and then i put the other side up and get something hard <clears throat> excuse me and bang down on it got some hiccups so i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now That's one side down, one more to go. And uh, just for precaution, I'm gonna get some of this electrical tape and cover up the uh, negative side for right now, because when I stick this positive wire through, I don't want it to even brush up against it at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you really don't want a fireworks show where you're soldering at. That's not cool. So, all right, got that covered. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut off the uh, positive side. If I can get a hold of my wire coat clippers. All right, so now we got that. and take the plastic off. All right, got the plastic off. Go ahead and put some of this flux up on here. Get that flux up on there. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's the flux is pretty good up inside the threads up in there. And uh, make sure the threads are together pretty good. Cause everywhere that the flux is, that solder is gonna like uh, be attracted straight to it. So, all right, now go ahead and pretend this wire. this through the other side without shorting anything out. Now you see how I got the tape on there? You just want to make sure that you're covering up any chance of hitting the negative side because it will be a very negative <laughs> thing to happen if you uh, don't be safe with this. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat up the bullet with the other solder in it so I can go ahead and put it all together. Ooh, that was a big one. Ah, shucks. That sucks. <laughs> it kind of rhymed too. There we go. Take some of this stuff off. Yeah, that's not going to be good. See that was um, that was something that I did not want to happen. It's all over where the uh, housing has to connect up to, so we just got to basically clean that up. And uh, you got to be careful though, because if you put too much heat onto it, then you'll basically have to redo the whole thing because it'll it'll fall off. So I'll just try to take it off a little bit by a little bit with the soldering iron. And uh, if you're wondering why I'm not trying to heat it up and then use the solder sucker, it's because I'm not thinking. I just look get plugged up like that. All right, let me see the way I'm banging this thing up in here. Okay. Woo, that thing's still hot. <sighs> and there you have it. The uh, Castle 6.5 polarized bullet connector. Positive on positive, negative on negative. I had to do a little addendum to this video. Uh, if you have any problems, like say for instance, if you cut too much wire off down here when you went to go uh, solder in your wires to the connectors, like, I mean, I know you could use electrical tape, but you know that sometimes eventually comes off. So what I try to use is the uh, liquid tape, which sometimes comes off after a while, but for the most part, it's pretty good because it gets into those nook and crannies that you know, but the basic electrical tape cannot get to, and uh, it is a pretty foul odor, and it is very very messy but uh and it dries i'm not gonna say fairly quick but 
basically you want to keep it airtight when you're not using it and uh, I have it on a lot of my connectors but um, I might go ahead and put a couple coats on here just to be on the safe side because you never want to have a short I'm not even sure this might make stuff even waterproof, if I'm not mistaken. Don't take my word for it. Don't be using this stuff saying, oh, DJ Dave said that it makes my stuff water, waterproof and I done try to use my RC as a submarine and I don't work no more. But um, just saying, after it dries, it kind of like, you know, it covers up everything. Though. But, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There it is. You don't have to kick it on too much. Because sometimes too much is not always good. And the more you have on there, the longer it's going to take to dry too. So. And then that's the longer you have to wait before you could actually run it without having a big mess on your hands. And anything else it touches. <laughs> but uh but that's it though thanks for watching y'all